ourselves. And so when we get to the end and the lid is the garbage can, is that the lid of the can comes out and yes. here's Kinsey. And you had to decide whether she was going to blow them away or yeah. not. Yeah. That was part of the fuel of that yeah. book, wasn't it? I did know that was going to happen. I didn't know how it was going to happen. But A is about her reflecting on the fact that she's killed somebody and trying to make sense of that. So in essence, these books are reports she writes for her own purposes. As a private investigator, she writes reports for clients. But often at the end of a case, she needs to go back and understand her part in it. She needs to tell it now that she knows how it all turns out. She needs to work back through the series of events that leads to the end of the story. Right. But if that, that was the dynamic of the book, then learning a lot about Kinsey would have been in the way of all yes. that. So maybe that story yeah. prevented um, that kind of long well, setup. Well, and the truth, and I may have learned this in Hollywood too, we are what we do. Right. We are what we do. We can say we have our illusions about ourselves and we have all the things we wish people would believe about us. But at the end, we, we are our actions, whatever our belief system and whatever our self-image, what we do is defines who we are. So in that instance, Kenzie Mulholland has that defining moment. What about, I mean, you've been pretty sparing with romance for Kinsey ah. here. I was thinking about Robert Dietz and that he came in, which book was it? G is for Gumshoe. G, which is, I think, the first book that you came to sign for us. And then, you know, you've not, you, she's just kind of moves on. Uh, well, I'll tell you why, just, just between you and me. I don't, romance, that just slows everything down. If Kinsey is connected to some guy, if she married, then every time she's chasing a bad guy, she's going to have to call home and say, honey, would you feed the cat? Would you get the pork chops out of the freezer? That just bores me. I think romance in a mystery novel, unless it's handled judiciously, just gets in the way of what's going down. So once in a while, just, you know, she is a person who's not very connected to guys. She does venture out. She's fairly circumspect about her sex life. You know, she is not somebody who falls into bed with people. Once in a while, she gets snagged into something, and she's never very optimistic about it. Right. But one of my objects at the same time is to give these guys life of their own. There was Jonah Robb from the police department. There's uh, Robert Dietz and Cheney Phillips. You know, they're not bad guys. They're wonderful guys, each in their own way. And so Kinsey understands it's her flaw that keeps her from connecting. She isn't into male bashing or man hating right. at all. No, I understand that. And, and that, there's been a wave of sex into mystery lately. Oh. I blame Janet Ivanovich um, in part. <laughs> but I mean, there really have, I just edited a book in which I slashed out uh. a whole bunch of it, not because it bothered me, you know, uh, yeah, but a, because it slowed the story down yeah. so much and, and it was a repeat, a reprise of, a, of an earlier scene in the book and I thought, okay, once, yeah, once well, into once, bed, exactly. but twice is too much well, in this you story. Know, you write sex scenes and for one thing, I don't think it's anybody's business what, what happens in Kinsey's bed. And then as a writer you get into the whole issue of how many body parts are you going to mention and in what order. And that again, th that embarrasses me. I just think it's not good writing often to get into body parts and heaving and carrying on. Uh, I leave it to the imagination of the reader, which is a much more powerful way to go about it. So it's kind of nice that Kinsey then has this old, you know, her landlord, Gus. I mean, it, it's, not, it's not contrived for her to actually have male friends who oh, are with dramatically Henry, yes. older, yeah. which yeah. I think works yeah. out extremely yeah. well. Well, I had a couple of notes to myself, and <laughs> since you did. at my age I tend to wander off here, I wanted to ask you a couple of things. Okay. Um, you came to open the store in, or not to open the store, but shortly after in um, with Gia's for Gumshoe. In 1999, you did something I have forever appreciated. We had moved to a new store, ah. and I phoned you, and I said, Sue, we've just opened a brand new store, and you didn't even miss the beat. You said, oh, you need a headliner, <laughs> don't you? And you changed your whole book tour so yeah. that you yeah. could come and sign Always for Outlaw, which yeah. came out in October, which is Perfect. when we did this. I've always appreciated that tremendously. Well, you know, just to get into mutual admiration mm -hmm. here, you are one of the smartest book dealers in the business and I've always admired your flexibility and your smarts 
you got street smarts. You know how to stay alive and well. So it's been a pleasure to do business with you, just frankly. Well, I thank you, but that, that was a real sacrifice. And as you've become more, I mean, not a sacrifice, it was a real wrench because you had to redo the yeah. tour and it wasn't all that easy. As you've gone along over the years, how has is, how is living the life of a celebrity yeah. been for you? Well, again, when, when those questions come up, will you come and sign, will you, I, that's all shadow driven now. I know in the first instant, yes or no. And the, when I get myself into trouble is when somebody says, will you come do this public speaking engagement? And the, I'm thinking no, and my mouth is going, okay, you know, trying to be a good Girl Scout. It's better what I do when I do an event, it's because I want to do it. I'm not trying to be polite about anything. So many things I turn down, just can't do it, not interested. But people will catch me in some little mood where they'll ask me to do something outrageous. I go, okay, I'll do it, you know? Well, I remember the next outrageous thing I asked you to do was in 2001, and I had suddenly been presented working with a former colleague at the Library of Congress about putting together the first National Book Festival. Oh. And I needed to ask some authors that I thought would be willing, in case publishers didn't get with it, <laughs> to actually go. Yeah, um, yeah. And so you and I talked about it. I have often thought what a, what a wonderful thing that was because mm. that was the last weekend that Washington. Uh, that's exactly right. I left, that was before 9-11. I left on the 9th of September. Two days later it was. I flew out of Dulles on the 10th uh, and then we all remember what happened on the 11th of yeah. September 2001. And I've, I've often thought, you know, so often good deeds are punished, but I've often yeah. thought that that group that of us oh. that went to that book festival shared something that is impossible to recapture because yeah. the world changed over. We are not innocent anymore. No, mm. and Washington has never been the same no. again. No, that that was I thought just a really magic thing. But I so much appreciated your going Thank and you. you know <laughs> being at the library. And one of the things that I enjoyed a lot was your husband Steve, who at oh. that point I didn't realize had you know his doctorate in philosophy. But if you remember, Steve and I went off and toured some of the rare book collections in the library oh. yeah. while you were off being famous. <laughs> And, and it was really nice to yeah. get to know him. He he's doesn't a very, very smart often fellow. travel with you, yeah. does he? No, because he's too smart, you see. <laughs> there, you know, there's nothing more boring than watching somebody sign books and shake hands. I mean, often, he, he did travel with me a couple of times early on. He would get so protective that he would just forbid me. To, he would have little fights with bookstore owners who were asking me to sign the 80 copies left over. And I, I finally thought, you know, I'm, I'm, on the warpath here. I'm doing my job and I can't be sidetracked by being somebody's wife. You know, this is business and I'm out here doing it and I just don't want to worry, is he bored, is he tired, is he hungry? I mean, I need to take care of myself. So He's so entertained now that he doesn't have to go with me. He likes hearing about it, but he don't want to look at that from day to day. So you guys are now dividing. When I first knew you, you were living almost exclusively in Santa Barbara. Yeah. Uh, what, what impulse has driven you to sort of divide your time between Santa Barbara and Louisville? When oh, I, I left right Louisville, Louisville, Kentucky, I just thought, thank you, Lord Jesus. I'm crossing the state line. I'm going to California. But we went back in 1993 because I was being honored by the University of Louisville where I graduated in 1961. And uh, as a sort of lark, we decided to go look at property because everything is so expensive in California. In Kentucky, I'm going, I could buy this entire cul-de-sac mm -hmm. for the same price it would cost me for a house out in California. So we looked at 13 properties. The second house I walked into, I thought, this is my house. So we bought that. We saw it on Tuesday. We bought it by Friday. And, and the conversation we had between us, Steve said, if this is a mistake, it is not life-threatening, and if we're not willing to take this risk, then shame on us. So we lived in that house. We owned it, I think, for seven years, and then we saw the house we're in now. Bought that in 2000. And, and but, you, but you do go back and forth. I do. We sprint, and I spend spring and fall in Kentucky. I go for the thunderstorms. I go for autumn. I go for occasional snowstorms. It's great. I think it, 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 I often wonder if all of us are, you know, I go back to Chicago now periodically, and like you, I grew up in yeah. the Midwest, although I'm not sure if you define Kentucky as Midwest exactly. But I call it the semi-south. <laughs> okay. Anyway, driven off to California, went to Stanford, the whole bit, thought I'd escaped it for good, but now I find myself getting kind of nostalgic yeah. as I'm getting older for Chicago, so I wonder if there's kind of a, a thing about roots. 